Good morning everyone and as promised here is my tutorial how I do how I do my glass jars painted with chalk paint if, with a design applied to them. Here is a jar, uh, I've already given it one coat of chalk paint just for speed, you don't need me to show you how to paint a jar. Um, I've also cut my design already which is just a border off um, uh, access images uh, design space um, which I'm just going to apply to the jar. So in order to measure the jar what I do is just take a scrap bit of paper or card, wrap it round, draw a line and then measure. Uh, you won't be able to see it I'm sure but there's the line I did and I make it just one millimetre longer than it needs to be because I'd rather be able to trim it uh, to fit so that when it's round the jar uh, it kind of joins properly and there's not a gap in, the, in between them. Uh, what I also tend to do is take the design once it's cut, uh, just sit it on a scrap bit of card and just so I roll it gently a couple of times and then the next time I'll do it just slightly tighter and the reason I do this is so that it curves around the jar more easily and by using the cardboard it just stops it creasing usually um, as you can see so it's now kind of nicely curved uh, which will just uh, help grip onto the jar. So for gluing the um, the design itself, I just use scotch glue sticks, permanent glue, and I just apply it all over the design. I'll try and do this as quickly as I can so you don't have to just sit and watch me gluing. <clears throat> just make sure it's all covered. And you do want every single bit of the cardboard covered because you will get lift otherwise when you start painting over it. Um, and the reason I use a paper towel, I find that it helps catch the excess glue over the sides. Uh, <clears throat> Yes, I'm trying to do this very quickly. And I kind of just hold it to the light and see if I've not missed any bits, which I have there, right in the middle. One thing I have found with the Scotch glue sticks is that it kind of reacts quite badly with the, the Rust-Oleum chalk paint. I don't know if it reacts with other chalk paints, um, but usually it's okay. Um, it, it does dry, but it, and it, it kind of goes quite rough, but that's all right if you're going to be distressing it anyway. If you're looking for a smooth finish, then maybe this isn't the best glue. Uh, but actually, I've used it, just ordinary PVA school glue, uh, white glue, whatever you call it, um, and it works fine as well. It just takes a little bit longer to dry. Uh, so now that that's all glued, I'm going to attach it to the jar. And I maybe should also point out that uh, I, I give the jar a coat of paint first because um, A, it helps the, the stick, uh, and you just get a better finish. And a lot of jars you'll find, especially cheaper jars, they have got a, a join, uh, and I tend to put that at the back. So that's where I'll line it up to. And I'm just going to go around the jar, sticking this on, making sure it's as straight as possible, which that looks fine. And I've just got a piece of greaseproof paper, baking parchment, baking paper. So I'm just going to wrap that round and I'm going to take the bit of card I used to roll up the design as well, just wrap that round as well and I'm just going to hold that there just for a couple of, a couple of minutes if that, uh, just to help it stick. Um, make sure there's no lift, I assume I've done that for two minutes, I don't want you to sit and watch me do that for two minutes and then I'm just going to make sure everything has stuck down and I'll just sort of go around with my thumb, finger, uh, and just press it down so a little bit further, just like that, make sure it's all properly stuck, no creases, um, but because of the chalk paint and because you're going to be distressing it, if you are distressing it, it doesn't matter if there's a little bit of lift, it actually just gives some more depth to the, the finished jar, uh, but that's kind of looking good, um, so you'll see, you, you'll, you'll barely see that join once it's painted, which is just what you want. Um, now of course you don't need to use a border like this, you could just use, I don't know, maybe various flowers, um, stick them on, I've done that before, it, basically anything you want really. Um, geometric designs, fl floral designs, lace designs, uh, just absolutely anything. Uh, even names, uh, cursive font joined up, uh, sort of written round, ideal. Um, so I think that's looking good now. Uh, so I'm just going to just let that dry for... Ideally, you want that to dry for a good couple of hours uh, before you give the, the next coat of paint. Um, I'm not going to have that much time, but I'm just going to leave it for 10 minutes uh, and I'll come back and see you shortly.
Okay, so this has now been drying for about 20 minutes or so. Like I say, normally you would leave that a bit longer, um, just to make sure it's properly dry. You can use a hair dryer as well, that's quite useful, uh, helps it dry quicker. So I'm now ready to give it its second coat. Um, and a useful tip, if anyone doesn't know, uh, I'm not wearing gloves, because uh, I hate wearing gloves. But I do have dish soap on my hands that I just rubbed in, um, which acts like a barrier cream, stops the paint sticking to your hands, uh, or at least if it does stick, it washes off very easily. Um, so I'm just going to start uh, painting this. You don't want too much paint on your brush, to be honest. Um, and just start kind of dabbing it on, just so you can get the paint all over the design. And then just, you can brush it after that. So just dab it on, then brush. And I find the older the brush, the better for stuff like this. I do have a proper um, chalk paint brush, but uh, it's kind of too big for doing sort of delicate items like this, or more delicate items like this. So you just go around the jar. Not too much paint, like I say. Dab it on, and then brush. And by dabbing it on as well, I find it gives a, a rougher finish to the paint. Make sure it's all covered, uh, because when you go and then distress it, uh, distress it, distress it. Uh, there's more for the sort of the, the contrast color to stick to, and you get a, a better finish. I, I find anyway. But really, it's up to you how you you want to paint it. You don't even need to distress them if you don't want to. So I'm just going to carry on doing that. Make sure it's all covered. Uh, do the rest of the jar too. Also, depending on what you're using the jar for, if you're putting candles in, um, you kind of don't want the whole jar completely covered. Uh, if you've got some patches there's no paint, that's fine because then the candlelight would shine through. So I'm just going to go around the rest of the jar. You may find when you're brushing that some of the previous coat will kind of start to brush off. It's just because it's painted onto glass, that's all it is. So glass, it takes a lot longer to sort of dry and cure properly. Uh, and again, I don't know if you know, but chalk paint tends to take about 30 days to cure properly. Um, so even though it says in the tin, dries in 30 minutes, it doesn't properly cure for a lot longer. And I think we're kind of looking good there. I'm not going to be sort of too worried about the rim of the jar because I'll be putting string around it anyway. Like I say, dabbing it on here just gives the, the sort of more of a texture for the contrast colour to stick to. And I think that's looking good. So once you've done that, you just kind of go around the jar. I mean, you can see it's drying already very, very quick. There's a bit of mist look. Let's just a bit more paint on there. So as you can see, once it starts drying, you might get some lift. Maybe just push it down. Now here's another tip to get it off your hand without touching the wet paint. You could just get a ruler, if you can see that, I hope. There you are, sorted. And then you can just wedge that in somewhere to dry. Uh, so I'm going to leave that to dry for probably about an hour or so before I do the, the distressing bit. Um, and I'll see you then. Thank you. Okay, so that's the jar. I've been drying for about an hour now. I just sat it in the uh, in the windowsill in the sun because uh, the sun is shining in Scotland today which is great um, so we're now going to do the distressing part which I think is the bit that everyone was asking about mostly but how do you do the distressing uh, so I'm going to show you how I do it um, whether it's the correct way I don't know uh, I'm sure people do it different ways um, for the distressing on this one I'm just going to use antique sage it's not uh, Rust-Oleum paint this one it's Johnson's paint um, but basically what you want to do is get the Ideally, the oldest brush that you've got, it's kind of the bristles aren't, you know, if you can see the bristles, they're all like sprayed out. Uh, so just load the, the paint onto the brush, scrape off the excess. Um, and you just dab it onto a paper towel because you want very, very little paint on the bristles. Uh, so that it looks almost dry, actually. Um, I've just got a wee bit on the end there, I'm just going to get rid of that. That's enough. Uh, I don't know if you can see that there, but there's not much paint in that bristles at all. And then you just lightly brush over it, just working your way around. 
very, 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 very light strokes. Let me just turn the jar around this slightly. And you just keep going round. So one direction first. If you want to go another direction, that's absolutely fine. It depends on the effect that you want, I suppose. But you'll very quickly see the, the sort of distress build up and the design starts to get highlighted. So I'm just going to carry on doing that. And you'll see I'm not even loading any more paint onto the brush. And I probably won't need to. So I'll just carry on doing that. What you'll find with the jars, if you start going in that direction, you'll, you might end up with uh, brush strokes. But you can go in a diagonal direction, that's, that's alright. Again, it really depends on the effect that you want. And if there are brush strokes, actually it doesn't matter. Because um, I think these jars look quite nice when they're not perfect, I suppose. But just build up as much as you want. Obviously the trick here is to have a totally contrasting colour, so it's dark on light or light on dark. It doesn't work quite so well if the colours are sort of quite close in tone. And I'm just going to sort of do a bit around the top as well, very very lightly as I said. This jar has actually got a design on it, so it's picking that up as I go around. I don't know if you can see it. And then just uh, stand back and check it out. Like I say, it's very, very light. Let's go around the bottom as well there. The one thing I like about the rust graphite paint is the colour I've used as the base. It does look like either stone or slate once it's done, uh, which I really, really like. Uh, and you'll probably notice a lot of my projects use that colour scheme. Now you see I've got a slight lift there where it was drying, it's because I didn't leave it long enough of course, but it's because I wanted to do this video as quickly as I could so you guys can get it. Uh, but actually it doesn't matter because when you distress it, it just kind of highlights. As long as it's not sort of peeling off, it is stuck there. Uh, as you've distressed, the paint kind of goes underneath it as well, just holds it there. And I think that's about it. Now, what I am also going to do on this is add just a very light brush of silver. Uh, so I'm just going to use the same brush. Let's turn this over. As you can see there's actually no paint left on there anyway. So again Rust-Oleum Metallic. And it's the same idea. Just put some on your brush. I don't know if you can see that there but then just scrape it off as much as you can dab it onto the paper towel. It's, I know a little bit of a waste of paint of course. Uh, there's not much there but I really don't want it. Just a very very slight highlighting that I want here and again I'm just going to do the same. I know you won't be able to see this on camera but this is just going to give it a little bit of a, a hint of, sort of shine, sparkliness. I'm just going to dab it into the paper towel again just to bring up some more paint. Like I say, just go around until you're happy. Now, I can see the, the silver in there but I know you won't be able to see that in the video. Now there are other options for highlighting um, your design as well. Uh, another, I don't want to call it a trick, but another thing that I sometimes do in my pictures, uh, I'm just going to grab these here, are these uh, metallic uh, colour sticks. They look like glue sticks I suppose, uh, but these are brilliant for stuff like this. And you can just sort of dab on your design. Um, and because it's a raised design, obviously it's quite easy for this to stick to and it just sticks to that, it doesn't stick to the jar underneath or whatever you're doing. Um, and you can get a really nice metallic effect by using silver and gold, it gives a nice uh, 
a battered brass effect. Um, but you can add colour as well. Uh, and I just got these in Amazon. They're, I mean, they're kids' paints, really, <laughs> to paint things. Uh, but they're absolutely brilliant. Um, you can also add more colours to your distress. Gold as well, if you want. So I'm just going to add some gold as well, just to this one. Why not? Just load my brush up again. Dab it. Again, rust uh, gold metallic. Like I say, you don't want any wet paint on your brush at all, just very little. And again, I'm just going to go around and... Like I say, I know you won't be able to see that, but I just want a very, very light... Just means that the light kind of catches it when it's sitting on the shelf or wherever you've got them sitting. I quite like the gold because it's not very gold, this Rustoleum one. It's quite um, a more bronze colour, especially when it's on the graphite paint, which I really love. And I think I'm about good to go with that one now. <clears throat> so what I then do to finish it, I'm just going to put the lid on my tins of paint there. Excuse the noise while I bang the lid down. Sorry. Um, just ordinary jute string that you would use in your garden. I'm just going to take a length of that string. scissors are covered in glue, they're not cutting very well. Um, and again, just a, a bit of hot glue just to start to hold it there. I'm sure I don't really need to show you how to put a bit of string around the jar, but I just kind of wanted to show you how I completely finished them. So I'm just put another couple of bits of hot glue around the, the rim to hold the string. Without burning my fingers, which is what I often do. I'm hoping you can see what I'm doing here. Now you'll notice one thing that I like to do when I'm putting string around a jar or something like this, I always put the, the first bit down underneath, if you can see that there, and then when you wrap the string around it kind of hides that. Uh, it just gives a nicer finish I find, and then I can then I can start wrapping this round. to hold it. Obviously watch your fingers when using hot glue. And I burn myself all the time of course. Now we'll just go down to the bottom and just start wrapping round. And again you put as much string as you want until you're happy with the finish. Just keep it nice and tight. And again I like the the sort of the jute string with the, the grey paint, I think it's quite a nice sort of rustic finish. I mean you can do anything here, and I think I said in one of my comments that you could even um, use the lid again. So if you wanted to use the lid again, I wouldn't put any paint on the rim here at all. Uh, and then of course you can decorate a lid in whatever way you want. Now quite luckily the string has ended in the join, which I can see but that's fine. So I'm just going to glue this bit in here. A bit of hot glue. Just hold that there. So that'll be at the back because that's where the join is. Uh, and I'm just going to leave that like that. You can obviously tie a bow or ribbon, whatever you want to do, uh, more string, anything. But essentially that is the finished jar. Uh, so I will post this video uh, on my page uh, uh, and in the group as well. Um, and yeah, enjoy. Thank you.